Yes, I thought I'd start with some theory. So uh, if we just have a look at what we in IHS would class as a fifth generation fighter uh, aircraft, uh, the main points to bring out here are that we are expecting the pilot, the weapons, and the sensors to be fused into a single package, obviously stealthy, and obviously uh, being able to super cruise, which is effectively flying supersonically towards its target or away, but not using reheat, which is very thirsty on fuel. So, so that's really the main points to come out of a fifth generation fighter aircraft. The origins of this uh, program, which is for the Russians PAC-FA, or T-50 as they call it, and the Indian uh, derivative of that, which is the future fifth generation fighter aircraft, FGFA, they are the same platform effectively. And the PAC-FA program started in 1997, and the Indian component of that came along in 2007, so, so 10 years later. So the main characteristics of the PAC-FA effectively are to deliver these fifth gen capabilities if, as a counter to uh, the Joint Strike Fighter F-35 stroke F-22, the two American uh, fourth and fifth uh, uh, generation aircraft, and more latterly, perhaps more from an Indian point of view, to counter the growing Chinese threat from the J-20 and other products that are being developed there. So in terms of the development of the programme, uh, if we're looking at the 1997 start date, the programme uh, with its development and a number of issues which I'll come to uh, has, is about six years behind where it needs to be. So it's at stage four, which is the trials and testing element of the programme, and that's where it is today. So in terms of the main challenges to the program, uh, and this is mainly uh, PAC-FA now rather than FGFA, which I'll touch on shortly, there are six elements which you can see he here. Uh, the key ones being a, an active uh, radar, uh, a synthetic radar, and engine technology. These are the two areas that really are not at the level of technical maturity that they need to be to deliver the aircraft in the time scale that both Russia and India are looking to achieve. So in terms of the relationship between Russia and India, Russia is looking for funding, which it sought from India when it came to the partnership, and India is looking for technology transfer, particularly stealth transfer and engine technology. So um, those, those two things have developed. Unfortunately, the numbers of orders from those two countries have dropped in the past nine to ten years, which has uh, created some tension between the two countries. So in terms of the production forecast, uh, looking forward, you can see that there is a large gap where the Block 1 standard of aircraft is completing delivery in a couple of years' time, there is then a gap of some five to six years until Block 2, which is really the operational standard, starts to come into, into, into operation and, and starts deliveries. Now that is a major risk to the programme. Any, anything, any major programme that has to stop for a period of six years does introduce a lot of risk. But these technologies are still at fourth gen standard, and to bring them up to fifth gen standard, they need to be developed further. It's also important to say that the indigenous Indian uh, technological base wants to introduce a number of variances to the, to the baseline, the green PAC-FA standard, and those will need to be accommodated. So the Indians will be taking a, a three prototype aircraft uh, standard in 2019 and start to integrate their own uh, uh, technologies into the aircraft. So that's another dimension and another risk in the relationship and in the, the integration of, uh, of the aircraft and its delivery. So to conclude, uh, there's no doubt that there is at governmental level a real will to make 
PACFA stroke FGFA happen as a fifth generation product between the two governments. So there's, there's no doubt about that. And there have been another me num number of summit meetings over this. I think the last one uh, between Prime Minister Modi and uh, uh, the, 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 the Russian Prime Minister was ba back in December 15, where some work share issues were sorted out and the programme is now moving on. However, a number of the underlying technologies are still at a, a generation four level rather than generation five. And that has introduced a gap into the program to allow that technology to catch up. That's exacerbated by the fact that both India and Russia have seen a reduction in their indigenous needs because there are other aircraft out there that can fulfill that requirement. And therefore, the, the price per individual aircraft is likely to go up, which will have an impact on the export market. So there are a number of tensions there at play. And while the program, I'm sure, will succeed, it will take some time and will have wider strategic impacts for both countries.